very literally the spirit of that law uh, tells us that we should not be communicating with ICE unless they have a court order or a warrant. The phrase sanctuary city was just a few weeks ago one that few people even knew existed. Thanks to the murder of a young woman in San Francisco by an illegal immigrant, one who has been bounced back and forth between Mexico and America like the proverbial pelota, sanctuary city is now a part of the political lexicon and forcing people to look at other issues involving illegals in America versus what those who grew up here have in their legal pocket. Let's welcome back our legal eagle from the Philadelphia offices of O'Brien and Ryan, Heather Hansen. Heather, always a pleasure to see you on the show, but I'm going to start you out right away with a little bit of controversy here because Chris Cuomo, the New Day anchor on CNN, said recently that sanctuary cities don't exist. It is a misnomer. They are not safe havens. It's about how they follow the immigration law process. Excuse me a moment here lady attorney, but I'm going to go ahead and look right at this. Sanctuary cities do exist, do they not? They do exist. There's no legal definition, Ed, for a sanctuary city. However, there are a number of ordinances in over 300 cities which allow for sanctuary for undocumented immigrants to not be brought in for violation of not having their papers. So in that way, they are called sanctuary cities. Whether or not there is a legal definition, the effect is the same. They are not brought in simply because they are there illegally. Well, they are safe havens, though, correct? Because there's over That's 250 right. cities and counties in America that refuse to deport illegal aliens. That sounds like a safe haven to me. Well, that's exactly what it is. I mean, whether you call it a sanctuary city, whether you call it a safe haven, whether you, whether you just go by the words of the ordinance and say that there's no law that makes it so that you're going to be deported based solely on the fact that you're there illegally, whatever it may be, these people are there because of the ordinance that says that you cannot go after them simply because they're there illegally. There is now some discussion, too, and you've written an article about this as well, regarding the woman who was shot dead July 1st, allegedly by the gentleman uh, Juan Francisco Lopez Sanchez, the illegal immigrant here. Can they sue the city over that sanctuary city policy? Well, I think that they can and I think that they should, although I get the impression from the family that they're far more compassionate than I and, and don't intend to do so. But I do think that they have a valid case. You know, we've talked about this as if it's the first time that it happened, but in 2008, almost the exact same thing occurred, Ed. There was a woman whose husband and two sons were killed by an illegal immigrant, and she did sue the city, and that case was thrown out. However, since then, our Supreme Court has said in the case of U.S. versus Arizona, that the area of immigration is, is an area for federal law, and it preempts state law. And therefore, if you have a state law or a city ordinance that falls in the face of the federal law, it's my position that that would be illegal and that anyone with standing, like this poor girl's parents, would have the right to contest that law. Heather, is there a double standard when it comes down to illegals versus people who actually were born here in America? I mean, when I look at this one story, and this is just a report saying that sanctuary cities release some 8,000 illegal aliens with criminal records in a year. I got news for you. I know, a lot of, <laughs> I know a lot of people when I was growing up as a kid, they said, gee, I wish that would have happened to us. There's a lot of people who don't get released from prison and they live in this country. I think it's a, it's a double standard, and I think it's just so much confusion, Ed. I mean, all of the different laws, the city ordinances, the state ordinance, the federal laws, they all sort of overlap with each other, and nobody knows who's in charge. We saw that in the San Francisco case, where the Federal Bureau of Prisons released that man to San Francisco rather than back to ICE. ICE wanted him back. I mean, it's as if the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. Clearly, we need to get a better handle of this, because it cannot continue to happen this way. It's too many times that we see this type of thing. And it has to be fixed so that the people that we, we just continue this argument that we can make sure that the people who are here, who are meant to be here are safe. The people who are not meant to be here can figure out a way so that there's not this constant argument and the waste of resources, both federally and at the state level. I got about a minute left here. Here's something else. Speaking of sentences, the president has reduced the prison sentences of 46 inmates. That's his commutations that he's granted to a total of 89. He says that the punishments didn't fit the crimes. Now, does he have a point? 
You know, we've talked about this a lot. Criminal justice reform is going to be a big issue in the future, and people on both sides of the aisle are talking about this and pushing for it. You know, we don't know enough about these these people whose sentences he has commuted. commuted. It's interesting to me, if we're going to let those people out of jail, perhaps then we can make room for some of these people who are in sanctuary cities and should be in jail. There's got to be some sort of a balance. Do I agree that, yes, we need criminal justice reform, that people who are committing low-level drug crimes should not be taking up space in our prisons? Absolutely. We've just got to make sure that it's the right people and the right type of reform. Heather, I think you're on to something there. Somebody's got a bag of weed or something that they got bagged for about 15 years ago where it's now legal. Maybe it's not bad to let them out and let's put the real killers and the real crooks in jail where they actually belong. Outstanding. You and I on the ticket in 2020 were cooking. <laughs> Heather Hansen, always a pleasure. Sure. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll talk to you soon. Good to see All you, All right. Dad. A reminder, Newsmax is going to air a full hour of Donald Trump's Arizona speech Tuesday night, 10 p.m. Eastern, and repeating again at midnight. In case you missed it, people are still talking about it. So are we. Simple question. What would happen if America up and decided to truly become an isolationist country? We'll do that next right here on Midpoint.